Good morning everybody, welcome back to a new vlog. I am a very tired girl today, like I can't even like look you in the eye. I was on a press trip with Jo Malone yesterday, which is what you will have seen I think in the clips before this. It was so lovely, but I did get to bed very, very late last night and then I had to get up at something past five in the morning to make it back home for my autumn hair appointment because there was no way I was cancelling this hair appointment. My hair needs some TLC and I'm also like, after all of the summer trips, it's looking very golden, which, you know, lovely, but definitely not the vibe for autumn. And I really wanted to just go a little bit darker with my hair. So I was not moving this appointment for anything. So that is what we were up to this morning. We're gonna have a nice little autumn hair change i'm really excited i'm really looking forward to it i'm also just looking forward to not looking like an egg for another few days because um i've literally just had my hair in a bun uh for quite a while now but yeah i am definitely wearing like yesterday's outfit plus a cardigan um we're just gonna move past that um i'm just so impressed i made it back from london in time for a 9am hair appointment go me well done me i had time to grab a coffee at home before i left i've had a chat with the painter oh my god getting i actually might start getting up early and doing like a kind of like six at least a 6 a.m but maybe a 5 a.m situation because i like getting up at 7 7 is good i just feel like i get so much more done in my day obviously by getting up an hour and a half earlier like get so much more done and then by the time everyone else is starting their day i've already like done all my stuff love it love it. so anyway i need to go because i don't want to be late for my hair appointment i have three minutes and yeah should be bang on time love that love that for me so me and my little what is this a pumpkin caramel pumpkin caramel pumpkin latte something like that i'll show you the syrup later me and my caramel pumpkin latte I'm gonna go sort out my little egghead so this is the before I've got a lot of lightness going on up here i've had it's going very warm so i've had to be purple shampooing it a lot um, and I want to just kind of like bring this back down. I'm um, also probably going to do a little bang trim because we're like softening those as they grow out. But yeah, keeping the length because I love the length and just making sure we maintain that like slightly blunt cut to help with like thickness. Also, I think I still have eyeliner on from last night. Like I think there's still like residue of eyeliner. How shameful is that? I feel like this is like real 15 year old Susie vibes. So, bedroom is a mess as usual, let's ignore it, but I thought I would show you my outfit of the day before I change out of it, because I just can't wear this t-shirt anymore, you guys. All the vlog footage I edit back is me wearing this t-shirt, and it's just getting shameful now. So, yeah, I'm wearing my big, oversized House of CB cardigan, my Anina Bing t-shirt, urban cowboy boots, Balenciaga bag, YSL sunnies, and then we have fresh autumn hair as well which doesn't look like I can't get the camera to pick up the actual color right now because I'm wearing so much black but it is fairly dark compared to how it was looking this morning it was looking very very golden this morning we've now got like this nice ashy tone on the ends and then quite a dark root as well I really need to sort my fringy bits out I literally they looked perfect and then I went outside and now they don't be yet much darker on the root and this midsection here, don't mind me if I keep these sunglasses on because I honestly, I look, they're getting up pre 6am wake up, amazing for productivity, not amazing for the face. But yeah, I've got a very dark head of hair, like you can really see it when I flip my hair over, very dark. I love it. So in case you're wondering and you want to explain to your hairdressers, because I always get asked what I ask for at the hairdressers. I can't speak. Wow. Basically, I went in and I was like, I want to be marginally darker, but not so dark that it looks wrong for me. And I also wanted to maintain lightness on the ends because it was very blonde on the ends and that was lovely. And I didn't want to take that away and undo all of our like hard work. So we did uh, highlight it earlier in the summer but over the summer this year it's i've been in the sun so much more than i would normally so we need to like ash it out 
a lot more than we have done the past couple of years and I am just obsessed so we've gone for quite an ashy uh, root and dragged it quite far down and gone for quite an ashy toner as well all over including like on the ends as well and I just love love it and my hairdresser actually went slightly ashier than she would normally so it's going to look very like dark and ashy at the moment but that is because i'm going back to ibiza on sunday so we didn't want to just like go a little bit and then obviously it will just be undone in the next few days so yeah we've gone a little bit harder than we would normally but i'm actually happy with that because i did I didn't want it too dark and I didn't want to say that I wanted it like super dark because I didn't want to end up like going too far but I think this is perfect if anything we could go a smidge more but I'm gonna see how this sticks because it's such a lovely color I'm sorry I can't not look at my hair but it looks I'm very happy with it after having looked at how yellow it was for so long like it's been yellow basically we did my hair and then I went to Bordeaux and it was fine but then the weather after that it's just been so hot so warm I've obviously been to Ibiza twice since then and it's just got more and more and more yellow so yeah we've kind of brought it back to how it was before Bordeaux but then added like a smidge more like depth to it and I just think it's so perfect for autumn and no trim on the ends but we did feather out my fringy bits a little bit more just whilst they are growing out uh, because they just got very annoying very quickly for me and just don't need this in my life. So yeah, I am very happy that I can now fully tuck my hair behind my ears very comfortably. Love that for me. And soon I'll be getting it back into a full ponytail as well. That was probably the most annoying thing for me was not being able to put my hair in a ponytail um, or a slick back bun without having to like put hair clips in and the point that I have to put hair clips at the moment it kind of gives my it just doesn't add like to like the sleek look that you want when you do a slick back bun so um yeah very happy that those are growing out and they're growing at, an, at a phenomenal rate I'm so impressed anyway I need to get changed because I need to get out of this outfit wear something different you know Good evening everybody. Slight time jump, ever so slightly. It's the evening now. Uh, I didn't get as much done as I'd hoped today. I really hoped, I was highly ambitious today. Thought I'd get all the vlogging done and just all of my work done and no, the vlogging definitely didn't happen. Um, but I did get the entire house cleaned after I finished work, which is ideal because I didn't realize my friend was coming over. So hence the, the outfit, which I wouldn't normally be wearing uh, at this point in the evening, you know me, love a hoodie, love sweats, love an oversized tee, anything super like cash. But yeah, I am wearing a little cropped white shirt. I can't remember where this is from, but I'll try and find it or find something similar. Um, and then I've got a little bralette on underneath just for like some layering, you know, just so I don't feel completely naked as well um, and then I've got my low rise urban outfit trousers on which I took up today which it doesn't look like I did but I did um, I have taken them up to uh, accommodate like a boot so it's fine with a heel but just looks a little bit like wild right now but um, yeah didn't want to cut them too short so that is how things are looking I've just got my white fluffy Birkenstocks from white company on which I'm desperately in need of a new pair of but I actually don't want to get a new pair because I don't feel like they last and I don't feel like they're easy to clean or anything like that so I just feel like they're grubby AF. Need a new slipper situation desperately um, but yeah I'm just about to top up my makeup very quickly literally just add a little bit of lip liner and maybe some powder and then I'm ready for my guest. She has goodies as well because I got some doubles from my trip so I thought I'd pack some things in a bag for her um but yeah that is what i am doing this evening as you will have seen i also just unboxed this candle which i got given on the press trip i was on it is incredible it's like a wood burning fire like really really stunning it's a joe malone candle that i've never seen before as well like part of the i think it's the townhouse line i've never seen it before but it is stunning like the it comes with a little lid on the top and they're like almost like a white painted i don't really know what the texture it is like matte 
painted white, it's so stunning. Hello, I'm being watched. Hello, you know what time it is, don't you? The sun's going, this is the thing when the sun goes down, she starts wanting her dinner a little bit, oh, you heard the word. Um, she starts wanting food a little bit too early. It's not actually time yet, is it? But you're a bit confused, don't worry, it's fine. It's on its way, it's on its way. It's actually just defrosting, she's not getting like a delivery or anything. get a chance to fully vlog last night i was very much wrapped up in conversation but i had a lovely evening with my friend carla cooked us a little like creamy pesto pasta and it was so good like actually took me so long to make when i looked at the time i was like how did it take me so long to make this but it was amazing i had a really nice evening this morning i'm going to show you my updated makeup routine that i do on a daily basis at the moment for when i'm not really doing anything like fancy and it's a bit rogue like it just looks bizarre when I'm doing it but it all works out so well um, and I've had a lot of compliments on my skin especially and this routine is very much like weird but based around skin so yeah I thought I would take you through that this morning I'm also over the moon because the scaffolding has finally gone from my garden so now we can have a whole home update um this afternoon I've been waiting for this day because scaffolding is so ugly and it's been making me really sad and the thought of having it across my whole house at some point also makes me really, really sad. But yeah, my garden is resembling a garden again and it actually looks so much bigger now. Yeah, I can't wait to take you through the whole um, house update, which I will do in a bit. But anyway, we're gonna get on to makeup. So I'm gonna start off with the YSL, I think this is the All Hours Foundation Stick. This is the shade B70. It's gonna look very questionable, but we're gonna make it work. So I literally draw it across my whole head. I didn't actually wanna bronze up this much today, so. We're gonna really buff this out. But I literally put it across my whole head and then tiny bit on my cheek. I don't like a lot of like product here. I actually think it's better if there's less, but I like a lot of definition across my forehead. Um, I'm also taking the Bobbi Brown uh, Corrector Stick in the shade Light Peach. And I'm obsessed with this. This, even if I'm having like a no makeup makeup day, I always just put this just literally here in my inner corners of my eyes because it just brightens everything up. And that's, I'm just very dark, like it's hereditary. We're just very dark and very ashy in this area, uh, me and my mother, so it really helps me. Also gonna put a little bit of the Hourglass blush onto my cheeks, like this is literally my makeup routine. I stick it all on, all at once. Uh, this is the shade Sacred, which I think is just stunning. Sometimes I put a little bit more of this on after if I need, depending on how much, how hard I wanna go with it. Then we are taking the Giorgio Armani Concealer, uh, this is the Luminous Silk Concealer, it's so good, uh, in the shade 4.5. And this is my lighter concealer, and I, what I do is just put it underneath, uh, like, my cheekbones, and then I'm gonna buff that out. Um, and then I also put it on my chin, and then in the centre of my forehead. Literally look like a colouring by numbers face so that is it for now but i am going to add a few more products in a second but this is what i start with and then i take my uh rare beauty four in one optimist always an optimist mist throw it all over my face this is a lovely mist as well i really like it and it doesn't like break me out because some do and then we take my charlotte tilbury uh bronzer which i really like i'm going to actually use this in a minute but for now it's just my mirror if all day every day love this for the, the giant mirror it's so good and then we're gonna start by, everyone always says start with the lightest color, but today I won't because I actually want to blend my lightest into my darkest and bring it down a little bit because I didn't actually wanna use this much bronzer. Sometimes I stripe it across my whole, whole forehead and then some days I just kind of, all oh, the suns will really come out. Um, and then some days I dot it on depending on how intense I want the color to be. We're looking very blue in here, hang on. 
there we go. Change the lighting slightly so you get a better colour, a uh, better feel for colours. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Then I start blending the bit around my cheeks and then we're going to come down and do the blush. And these blushes sometimes they can be almost like a bit too sticky um, and they don't like to always blend out really easily like they take a little bit more blending um, to the point where I've heard some people be like I just literally don't apply from the like stick I apply onto a brush which does work but if you have a mist it allows it to really easily blend out and gives it a lovely dewy finish at the same time so I've just switched brushes this is my Real Techniques brush and I'm just using this to blend out the lighter colours. This I'm going to go over in a second because this looks really harsh but bear with me and I just really push this into the areas of my skin where it maybe needs a little bit more coverage. This correcting stick is also quite a thick sticky product um, so I really like using the Optimist even if I'm just blending this out um, on a like minimal makeup day. I will use the Optimist Mist on this just so it blends out easier and I don't have to like fight with the skin on my eyelids because the skin on your eyelids is precious and must be protected at all costs. I'm then taking the Hourglass Concealer which is an amazing one if you like like a soft glam look. Oh my god, it's just stunning. So I just apply a tiny bit around my forehead. It's darker than my Armani Concealer so I kind of use this on the parts of my face that are a little bit darker and I put a tiny bit on my cheeks here. I'm gonna go a tiny bit here because I'm just very dark there today. Pat that product in initially and I'm gonna really buff it out in a second but I like to pass it in and leave it to kind of set on any scarring. Like my scarring here is so minimal when I use this concealer like you can barely see it. And then just blending out the product on my forehead as well because I have some quite intense scarring on my forehead and it just doesn't go so I like to use this concealer around the edges of my forehead where all the scarring is and what scarring who would know and because I don't want to be too bronzy today I'm just taking that concealer to the edges of my face as well to kind of counteract that and then we're just going to take my buffing brush again which still has residue of the blush on it and go over the top and just buff everything out and make it really seamless and I really work this brush in quite wide motions so it's nothing is precise and everything is almost like blended out and melted together melting is like the key word of this look i think it's just get, literally getting every single product to melt into the other like you can't really see where anything starts or finishes this has been my go-to for about a month now i started doing it when i was I think in Ibiza and just haven't stopped. Now I'm taking a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer onto the end of my It Cosmetics brush. If you can get your hands on one of these brushes, I would highly recommend. I've been using them for years and I absolutely adore them. But they're just my go-to. The buffing brush on the end is just beyond incredible. It gives the best blend. But yeah, I just literally take the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, bronzer. I need to learn to talk slower, caffeine doing bad things for me. Um, I literally take the bronzer on the end of my nose, literally like just down here, not even up here, just down here. And then up and down my nose. And then I do the same for my eyes as well. So this is basically like a nice bit of contouring. Any area in your face ever looks particularly puffy, add bronzer, contour it away. And then also just taking some of this onto my It Cosmetics brush and just dabbing this, stamping this, buffing this, what is the word? Uh, underneath my jawline. I like to bring my contour up like a little bit higher, almost like, imagine you're doing like here. Um, that's where I'm actually aiming for, but like blend it out. Um, just to give that kind of like more chiseled look because my jawline actually just, oh, it is slightly rounded. It's not, I don't have one of those like super like jawlines. Yeah, I just like to add a little bit there. That's where I concentrate it. And then I add a little bit to my neck as well, but I don't want to add too much today. I don't want to come down too far because I'm wearing a shirt and I don't want to get makeup on my shirt because it always happens and it's very annoying. Then just adding a little bit to my ears. Okay, so that is most of my base routine. And then I just kind of leave it to sit for a little bit and move on to the eyes. I'm going to be taking my Vizart palette, which I just love. I love Vizart eyeshadows. They are so nice. And I believe you might be able to use my code on it. If you want it so disclaimer obs work with farfetch 
but you can use my code for 10% off. So as you can see, I haven't talked you through it, but I've just done a tiny little liner flick. I literally take this Zoe, no, Spectrum A23 brush, the best brush, because it's so tiny. And I just stamp it in literally the outer corner and then we bring that wing out and it's like just, and honestly, I can't go back to like normal liner after using eyeshadow. Like I always have to use eyeshadow first. It gives the best like shape and then you can go over with the eyeliner but it always looks perfect. And the great thing about eyeshadow as well is if you have long nails you can pull the uh, product into shape. And yes I did just say my eye skin should be protected at all costs and then I'm like dragging it out with my nail. Yeah, I did that. Next up, Glossier Lash Lick Mascara. The best mascara. This mascara, in case you haven't tried it before or you've got it but you're struggling with it, this mascara works best if you do like one long stroke rather than like lots of little strokes, if that makes sense. You end up with like a more real looking lash if you can do it that way. No, that is one coat. I just, I adore this mascara. I think it's so nice. When I first used it, I was a big like thick eyeliner wearer and I really didn't like it. And now I am obsessed with it. I use it every day. It's not the most expensive in the world. Big, big fan, big, big fan. Next, I'm just contouring my lips quickly using Max Stone. I literally just kind of like almost quite messily go around the line of my lip. And this just adds a really good shadow to your lips. If you don't have like the fullest lips, especially for me, I don't have like a ton of definition to them. They're not particularly full. This just kind of adds some fullness and some definition. It does wonders for you. It helps to make me look alive and fresh. <laughs> um, I'm just taking my Anastasia Brow Wiz, Brow Definer, Brow Definer in Ash Brown. And just gonna really quickly fill in my brows, just give them like a little bit of definition. Try to do the same on the other brow, even though they don't match up, but they match better than they ever have before, thanks to Botox. So are we looking even, honestly, who knows? And just brush them out a little bit. Okay, my lipstick is not here. So we're just gonna do some powdering. I love this powder from Bare Minerals. It's actually a powder foundation, but I really like a powder that has extra coverage uh, for your girl with a fair bit of scarring love that but it also just works so well as a powder so gorgeous like oh just love it i put quite a lot of powder under my eyes um not too much but like a fair generous amount and it has just changed my makeup like the difference i just love and i use this brush from nars which i'm a big big fan of uh i don't know what it's called because it literally says nothing on it but i I'm a ride or die fan of this brush. Nars brushes are actually very good. Just covers up my scarring a tiny bit. And then here I also push it onto, there's a spot that's like lingering there, like the end of it. And it just helps to like take the shine off, mattify it, you can't see it. Also just sweeping this over my chin and then doing the same on the other side. Okay, and then I like to do two things one is take my eyeshadow brush and this foundation and i pat it into my eyelid and this not only stops that bronzer from moving around it kind of just opens up that bit of the eyelid and makes it look quite wide almost like a 60s touch to it which i love honestly that finishing touch really does make it look so flawless like so glowy so gorgeous so flawless but everyone is always like how does your makeup last all day and i genuinely think like it's probably powdering over the top that is very, very helpful to me. Then my final step, which I don't always do because I did just put quite a lot of powder on, is I'm going to take my Surratt blush, my Surratt blush, which I adore. So pigmented and so gorgeous and so easy to blend. And I take it on my NARS brush because we love the NARS brush. And I just pop it onto my cheeks just to bring out that blusher that we put on earlier sets so it gives it longevity but i also bring it onto the center of my face okay let's go find my lipstick it was in my bag and where i knew it would be because it is always there what is this bit of hair please sir no mac honey love is just the one i love it i'm gonna be bold and say all-time favorite mac lipstick 
So that is how I do my everyday makeup. Not too many layers really overall, but it's so creamy and gorgeous and glowy long lasting I have, a, I have a lot of love for this makeup routine if i am going a bit more glam like i did the other night for the joe malone dinner the nars what is this the nars it doesn't say oh like reflecting foundation absolutely delicious very similar uh in terms of like it's not a it's like a luminous finish but it's not dewy but it's not matte but it's not satin it's just kind of like a really natural creamy foundation it reflects the light really beautifully so you get this same kind of like glow to the center points other than that the routine is always the same just more or less blush some days like sometimes i top up the cream blush before i also do the powder as well um but sometimes i don't want to do the powder depending on if i'm like looking dewier you know if i don't want to set it too much um but yeah i just adore this makeup look it's probably one of my all-time favorites so i just got a little bit dripped on taking the bins out but this is my outfit of the day um i was wearing slippers but taking them off because they're a little bit damp on the bottom uh it is basically peeing it down with rain today like I took the bins out whilst it was like spitting and that's the best I think we're gonna get today. Um, but yeah, I'm wearing this shirt from Zara, which you will have seen if you watched the last video that I uploaded. I'm literally uploading that today. I'm really excited. I love like the summer to autumn Zara stuff. I just love it. Um, and I actually wasn't expecting to like as much of the stuff as I did, but yeah, I really, really love this shirt. It's gorgeous. Um, and I think it's one of those pieces that I'll just crack out again and again because it's just a really lovely take on a white shirt it's a bit more interesting i think this kind of style is much more flattering on my body than like an oversized leather shirt tucked in i've then just got my zara um leather what these like leather trousers yeah leather like cigarette trousers i don't know don't even know what style they are so yeah wearing those and then my silver jewelry because i'm just really enjoying it at the moment so i'm just about to make some cereal you guys know if you watch the vlogs enough Literally, I'm obsessed with cereal. I'm obsessed with shredded wheat, and it's like, it's borderline unhealthy. It's like my favorite meal to eat every single day. Shredded wheat, various like peanut butters, always a banana. I thought whilst I make my cereal, I would quickly give you a little house update because, did I tell you this morning? Did I tell you the scaffolding's come down? If I didn't, I'm telling you now, the scaffolding is down. That scaffolding was so ugly and it was making me really sad and um, it's also just very stressful um for various different reasons that i won't go into but um yeah so really really happy that it's now gone we're just at like the end point now really yes yeah, so i will show you like a photo of what we were dealing with with the before like my garage backstory when i moved into this house i if you don't know i moved in during lockdown which is not an experience i recommend but hopefully no one ever needs to go through that again and if you did have to go through that i i understand and you know we, we need a support group um because no one was working no movers were working i was very lucky i've got families that run moving companies but I don't know what I would have done. I would have been paying for a flat and then paying for a... Mm, no, not ideal. Um, I feel like you can't see my breakfast. Okay, put the peanut butter in and then I'll do that. So yeah, I moved in during lockdown, trying to get an appointment at the tip or get into a charity shop was just not possible. So I moved with a lot of stuff that I would not normally move with. There was a lot of stuff I didn't want and I couldn't do anything with it. Oh my god, peanut butter is so sticky. Mm. My little makeshift table. <laughs> and it wasn't a problem because I had a garage. So I was like, I'll just dump everything in there. But two years later, when we're finally starting the garage renovation, I was like, doom. So yeah, that was the state of my garage. It was a nightmare. The foxes had got in as well. So stuff was like everywhere. It was so bad. I'm well aware. You can judge me what you like because I would probably judge me too. But anyway, that was the before. We bricked up some of the walls, knocked a hole in other walls. <laughs> Basically, there was only one wall we didn't touch. Then we found out that the roof had to come off and there had to be something done underneath and then all of the tiles put back on. It almost is on par with having built the damn thing from scratch. Obviously being slightly dramatic there, but it's close, but no donut, you know? But it's looking really good. So I have various different bits of footage uh, from like the past few weeks. So I will insert those now. Okay, house update number one. We have a giant hole in the side of the garage. So the bricklayers have been in today. 
we have, this used to be the garage door, so this has been completely bricked up. And then there used to be a window here, but that has also been bricked up. Um, it wasn't really doing much, it was north facing, and there's literally a fence like right there. So very, very pointless. So we decided to get rid of that. All of this is going, and then we're gonna build the walls in. Um, and then we're also going to be hopefully keeping these beams um, and vaulting the ceiling having some V-luxes up here. God, it looks so disgusting right now. Um, but hopefully it's gonna all look lovely. And then we're gonna have doors here and the greenhouse is going. Okay, so we are on, this is day five of the garage renovation. There is a big hole in the wall. There is no, what you call it, greenhouse. This is what it's looking like inside. The kind of wood bits for the wall have gone up. This is real technical terms. Um, the wood bits for the wall have gone up and because they went up higher than the original wall, the beams have also been raised. We also have electrics in, which I can't remember if I showed you in the last update. Um, random plank up here because someone was sat on it. Very safe. So we are about two weeks in and this is how Things are looking with the garage. My poor garden is a state. That there, that there, that's a Velux. We have windows. So yeah, I think we're on like day 14 or something like that, 15, 16. We've been away in um, Ibiza, so I haven't been able to document too much and there wasn't really a lot of change going on. Um, apart from the roof being stripped and going back on um, but on the inside there's actually a load of insulation and lots of like boards up on the walls um, and tomorrow it's going to be being plastered hopefully so this is what day are we on guys day 165 <laughs> we've lost count it's starting to look like a room we have Three weeks, I think it is three weeks. Uh, Two weeks? You came back, this is week three, I think. Yeah, we're on week three. Okay, so the plasterers have just left and this is what we're working with. The light is really good in here, by the way. We might have to take over Ryan's space every so often. This is how it's looking. I have no idea how they did this. We don't have tall plasterers, but it's really starting to look a little bit more like a room now. Okay, now to find my way back out of here. This is difficult without getting like dirt on my clothes. And then we're gonna go out into the garden together and I will show you what we're looking at. So this is the garden, looking a little bit different uh, for me, because there's no scaffolding, uh, but also for you, there is a greenhouse missing. So we come down here, my grass has been ruined by the scaffolding and then in here this is what we have got so far it's looking just a little bit different to how it did before so now we just have the flooring to do uh oh we also have lights we have lights up here which uh you won't be able to see too much but stunning and you can turn them down as well which we love we also have these lights as well on either side so hopefully soon the door will arrive and we'll have these lovely doors on the front the flooring will be in and then eventually we're going to have this patio kind of extended and brought down um so that ryan's not like stepping on stones every day and it just all looks nice and like unified actually funny we're talking about this today because i have actually been making notes for tonight's podcast which is uh, why owning a home is not all it's cracked up to be. I am slightly terrified about that podcast. I really thought you guys were gonna vote for Dating 101. A nice, lighthearted, fun one for me. No, no, we get to talk about my least favorite subject. Because honestly, you guys, owning a home is not as fun as YouTubers make it look. Like renovating a home, when you think about home renovations on YouTube and what people call home renovations. It's more like decorating and actually doing anything structurally is shocking. Shocking to my bank, uh, shocking 
in terms of like how long it takes, how much it impacts your life. And it's not as fun as some of my friends make it seem. Like I don't know how they do it. I understand how lucky we are to just be able to do this because we've had a point where we weren't going to be able to do this. And I'm, I'm so aware I'm so lucky. But at the same time, it's also not the most enjoyable experience for me, even down to like, I have, I'm doing like, so this is part two of home stuff, which I'll hopefully be able to show you when I show you the finished garden project, I'll be able to show you the finished um, like wardrobe project. But even down to that, like I'm not enjoying it. I enjoy the after. So like the styling something up, like the actually living with something. I enjoy the before of the like organizing the project and like planning it all out. The communication back and forth over that. Fine, that admin but I really do not enjoy the in the middle I really don't enjoy it and I know it's such a temporary small drop but I really don't enjoy it I, I don't love home interiors as much as I thought I did home renovations room transformations not actually my vibe turns out I'm going to talk about this more on the podcast so you can go and listen to that I don't want to like double up too much but anyway that's my two cents on the whole shebang I'm going to eat my cereal now <laughs> just can't I just can't I can't manage a face of makeup I am not feeling fantastic what was that what was the head wiggle um yeah not feeling fantastic uh we got back from Ibiza late what's the day what is the day we got back from Ibiza in the early hours of Wednesday morning because yes another fantastic easy jet flight experience occurred like I thought we were actually going to get stuck again because this time there was something wrong with the plane so we had to sit while well, they fixed it and then people got off because people it was like that scene in friends where phoebe is like there is something wrong with the left phalange and then rachel says it everyone gets off and then they have to find everyone's bags so just not ideal not ideal so we didn't take off until two in the morning didn't get to sleep until half five so zero vlogging occurred yesterday uh and i also meant to vlog some stuff in ibiza but it was just such a whirlwind a little trip that it didn't happen but we had a lot of fun um, there are photos on my Instagram if you want to go and have a little flick through. I've basically just uploaded an album of my favourite photos. We had a lovely time but I am very tired now and my end of summer cold has made its way to me early. So I guess this is for the best because I've got some surprises coming up for you soon and I don't want to be sick basically so yeah i'm just gonna rest this weekend like really rest no further house updates yet however the wardrobes are starting on monday 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 so i'm really looking forward to that i've got a lot of filming to get done in there to like pre-film before that all takes place however there won't be a video up on monday because uh sadly it's the queen's funeral and whilst there is no like manual for how to navigate uh life because obviously we've not had a monarch uh, pass away in any of the generations that I have known. So um, I'm not really sure what the rule book is, but I'm just kind of in the UK, it's a bank holiday uh, and everything is shut. So I am gonna like put it out there and say, um, I will save Monday's video for Thursday. So just so you know, no video Monday, um, but I will be vlogging behind the scenes because phase two of the bedroom project is going to be taking place and I'm just really hoping it looks good. You know, it's it's a lot of trust to put in someone to be like, can you make it look like this and give them your vision and just pray that it looks like what you've given them. Um, so yeah, very nervous for that, but there will be more home updates coming soon and then hopefully we'll have the final uh, garage reno uh update coming very very soon as well we're still just waiting on the doors they've been delayed what is new there honestly oh yeah and i've also just realized that friday's uh vlogging has zero context uh i i fully was meant to be vlogging that day um and it failed a little bit but i had just a really lovely meeting i went to the soho house in brighton and it's lovely i actually hadn't been i remember and i still haven't been um, but it was really lovely i had a little meeting there but yeah that's going to be it for me today because i just need to go and record the podcast again constantly record 
recording podcast episodes it feels like whenever i'm vlogging i'm like oh i'm recording a podcast episode um really does take over my life a little bit at the moment but yeah that is it from me this week i really hope you guys have enjoyed this week's vlog and i will see you again when will i see you again i will see you again next thursday Ooh. if you like bags you're gonna like next week's video okay i need to actually go now it's been seven minutes love you bye